since the origin of the galaxy, countless groups of warriors and armies have emerged over the millennia, each forging their own legacy of bravery, conquest, and conflict. From the disciplined ranks of the Republic soldiers, to groups of mercenaries like the signatories of Waymancy, or pirates hungry for conquest, perfectly exemplified by Zim the Despot. And without overlooking guardians of peace within the Order, the Jedi. Galactic history is full in battles and conflicts waged by these various factions. And among the countless warriors who have emerged in galactic history, one group has stood out as the epitome of ferocity and independence, the Mandalorians. The life of the Mandalorians has always been marked by the great difficulties that come with being within the Creeth, resulting in a group of warriors with formidable ferocity an unbreakable personality, tenacity, and great lethality that very few warriors can boast. Problems are not foreign to the lives of the Mandalorians since their origins date back to great adversity. The word Verda is the name of an epic poem that is between the limits of reality and myth, being one of the oldest known historical records. Even being written in the language of no Kant, it was a human language that existed before the creation of the galactic basic standard. Through more than 700 verses, the poem recounts the conflict between two groups that fought for control of a specific planet. The desired prize was the planet Notron, a place that in the future will be renamed Kursen, and where, on the one hand, the army of a group called Cell will be fight to the death against the enemy faction known as Tong. The particularity of this conflict, which happened more than 190,000 years ago, approximately in the year 200,000 before Battle of Javan, is that the Zell will in the future be the lineage from which humans will derive, being their ancestors, and the Tong will be known as the ancestors of the Mandalorians. The war between the Zell and the Tongue will end with victory for the Zell, where the ancestors of humans claimed what will eventually be known as Kursan as their home, while the defeated Tongue will be vanished from the planet. Wandering through space, the Tongue arrived at the planet Rune, located southeast of Kursan, a planet with the particularity of being surrounded by a ring composed of asteroids and meteors. Thousands of years passed, the descendants of the brave town warriors settled on their new planet, benefiting from the temperate climate and its vast territory made up of mountains, oceans and plains. The town had already called the planet Rune home. However, an emblematic figure will emerge to change the history of the town forever, Mandalore I. This new leader, in the year 7000 before Battle of Javan, thousands of years after the Great Defeat, will lead the Tongue to the conquest of another planet. After arriving on their new planet, the Tongue dominated the planet upon their arrival, their greatest challenge being the confrontations with non sentient species native to the same planet, huge horned creatures, the savage Mythosaurs. All the Tongue clans tested themselves in battle against this great beast, until all had failed before their axes and swords. As a sign of his bravery and as a battle trophy, the mask that Mandalore I will wear throughout his life was made from the reached sternum over the Mythosaur's heart. Faced with such a feat, the Tongue wanted to honor the leader who had kept his promises to them, so they will rename in honor of Mandalore I, two things, their planet and their own name, giving way to the birth of the planet Mandalore, the place inhabited by the Mandalorians, meaning children of Mandalore in the Mandalorian language. Mandalore became the home of fierce clans of masked town warriors led by a single warlord, the strongest and most powerful of all creating a government based on the meritocracy of reaching the supreme position. It was thanks to Mandalore I where all future leaders will take as tradition the title of Mandalore, meaning sole ruler. 
Rooted in their warrior culture, the innate need for territorial expansion began to grow within the Mandalorians. Once they had settled on their new home, the Mandalorians set out in a string of campaigns to conquer surrounding worlds and test themselves against any enemies they could find. It was during this expansion period that the Mandalorians began to accept new recruits from other species. Anyone who swore to follow their honor code and fight loyally when called upon was welcomed as a new brother or sister. According to Mandalorian legends, it was in the same year of the conquest of Mandalore, in 7000 before Battle of Javan, where the legendary Mandalore I heard his people officially forming the first documented group of Mandalorians, the so-called Mandalorian Crusaders. Expansion, more than a simple desire, becomes a fundamental need. Conquering new worlds not only reinforces their identity as indomitable warriors, but also fuels their reputation in the galaxy. For centuries, Mandalorian Crusaders roamed the galaxy, seeking new battles and challenges. Beginning in the year 7000 before Battle of Javan, the event known as Mandalorian Crusades. A set of military campaigns in order to subjugate different planets throughout space. The Crusaders defined themselves as a group that are a community of individuals who adopt and respect the same world tradition. They value abilities more than possessions, understanding that, even though they do settle in places from time to time, there will always be another call to battle beyond the horizon. They aren't afraid of technology, using what they learn to help increase their arsenals. Thus, warriors' armor and weaponry can be very different. This new community created after the arrival of Mandalore I has no written laws and few norms, but the few that exist are sacred. Chief among these are the Resolnari, or the Six Actions the core of what it means to be Mandalorian, a sacred law that gives direction and purpose. Education and armor, self-defense, our tribe, our language, our leader, all help us survive. A few words for a people of few words. The meaning of the sacred code is that raising younglings as Mandalorians Wearing armor, defending one's self and family, helping the clan flourish, speaking the language, and rallying to Mandalore's side when needed. There is a text extrapolated from the Resolnare, and it's known as the Canons of Honor. Unlike the six actions, this text focused on behavior. Derived from the ancient religious laws followed by the Tong society, the canons aim to help Mandalorian warriors achieve personal glory and honor. By following the tenets of Resolnare, with a special emphasis placed upon loyalty to one's clan and engaging in combat, the laws of the canons were satisfied and a warrior earned honor. The Mandalorians recognize no official ranks, respect for their sole leader, Mandalore and filial obligation to their clans are the Mandalorians' only responsibilities to others. Mandalorian forces, a term more accurate than armies, are amorphous, when information spreads through the warrior mass by sight and sound. Keeping one eye on their comrades enables Mandalorians to respond quickly when the direction of battle changes. During the more than 3,000 years that the entire conflict of the Mandalorian Crusades lasted, countless battles were fought and led by different leaders who used the title of Mandalore. The symbol under which the Crusades were fought is represented by a ring adorned with sharp points. The points are the weapons of warriors, while the ring symbolizes the cycles that govern life, birth, and death conquest and defeat, and the promise that new warriors will arise to carry on the traditions of the departed. Although the Mandalorian Crusaders was formed by Mandalore I, the first leader of the Crusades was an indomitable Mandalorian warrior who, 
thanks to his reputation in battle, will receive the fame of a conqueror, Mandalore the Conqueror. Under his command, the first conquests and victories were made, and finally, the third great Mandalore who commanded the Crusades was the one called Mandalore the Indomitable. The first conflicts that the Crusaders had were their fights against the Mandalian giants at Mandalore, but they were so impressed with their prowess in battle that they agreed to coexist, and in time they would admit them into their clans. They raided Fennel, a powerful isolationist world known for its shipwrights and technologists, culminating with the Fennelar's extinction around the 6700 before Battle of Javan. After the conquest of this planet, they armed themselves with Fennelar technology, thus turning to their next victims, the Tlonians, a vicious arachnoid species known for their poison sacs and habit of preying on ships foolish enough to stray beyond the frontier. Clone was depopulated and incinerated around the year 6100 before Battle of Javan. However, not everything was violent conquests, other worlds were spared. The Jaglands, for one, welcomed their new Mandalorian overlords, as did knots of worlds populated by humans, centered on Concordon and Gargon. Those worlds, along with the likes of Hergin, Vresh, Shagun, and Ordo, became part of Mandalorian space. The Republic kept a wary eye on the Mandalorians lest the Crusaders turn their attention coreward. But while Crusaders did hairy Republic settlements, sparking such skirmishes as the Pathander Fury, in 5451 before Battle of Javan, and the Nakat incursions around the year 5130 before Battle of Javan, for the most part, they remained beyond the frontier, pursuing their own mysterious missions. The few Republic traders who knew Mandalorian space had an unsettling message for the Republic. While the Mandalorians could build their own sub-community and even have confrontations with other Mandalorians, they would all obey the commands of the clan leader, the commands of Mandalore and despite their nomadic ways, they were great cannon technologists, improving Fenelar warships, Jaglan edged weapons, and even Republic rocket packs. After the Nakat incursions, the Mandalorians, in 4024 before Battle of Javan, attacked the planet Nevuda in the colonies, exterminating its species during a three-year campaign. In 4017, before Battle of Javan, Crusaders appeared in the Core Wars, waging war against the inhabitants of Vasilisk. Overall, the Vasilisk conceded their own world with toxins to deny it to the Crusaders who abandoned the world. After the war, the Mandalorians found a new use for the Vasiliskans. With their tough hides, large claws, and intelligence, the Mandalorians enslaved them and used them as mounts for aerial and ground fighting. Thanks to this ending, the inhabitants of Vasilisk went from being an intelligent species to mere beasts. Then, in 4002 before Battle of Javan, the Crusaders ravaged the deep core world of Quar, setting up Kamsar. The year 3996 before Battle of Javan will be a paradigm shift for the Mandalorian movement as an iconic figure. A male force user challenged Mandalore the Indomitable to single combat at Quar. The force sensitive defeated the clan leader who agreed to serve him. Under the false leadership of Mandalore the Indomitable but with a true control taken by others, the Crusaders riding Vasilis Quartroids stormed the Republic shipyards at Forest, then invited Kersen in their stolen warships. The Crusades continued 
on the planet Iridonia, war in the Avron, Thespians and Contrum systems to conclude. With the movement started by Mandalore I on the planet Onderon, in the legendary Battle of Onderon, where the defeated of the Mandalorians will be the end. This battle will be described as something humiliating for Mandalorian culture. The history of the Mandalorians will not end there. Defeat will not stop the children of Mandalore. On the contrary, these events will precipitate a frantic conviction where in the future the Mandalorian structure and ideology will change in order to preserve the prestige of this warrior caste. In the shadows of defeat, the Mandalorians will find a seed of their rebirth. Although the Crusades didn't have a worthy end for the Mandalorians, the fate would ignite the flame of a resurgent resistance. The downfall didn't become an epitaph, but a prologue for a new era of struggle and redemption. Ancient traditions will re-emerge with vigor. Leaders will appear to guide their people into an uncertain future but full of promise, and the forges will resonate with the work of new armor of those next warriors who will defend Mandalorian culture.